Today on FTR TV, we're gonna hang out with a reef nerd. Howdy. G'day everyone, my name is David Mime. Welcome back to First Time Briefer TV. And today I am actually staying in town for the weekend for my wedding anniversary with my beautiful wife. Uh, but I've got a bit of time to kill before she gets into town with my two little gremlins. So I thought I'd drop in and see Marcus the Reef Nerd. We're gonna check out his tank and we're also gonna walk around and uh, sort of just paint the idea of what he's got for his uh, upcoming reef build. So this is Marcus McNamara from the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. I'm gonna leave a link somewhere here or in the comments. So if you guys wanna jump over there, he's another Australian YouTuber, much more intelligent than I am, and does some incredible reviews of products and goes really in depth uh, to the philosophies behind reef keeping and how products work. So uh, I'm gonna turn the camera around now and he's gonna walk us through his tank. All right, everyone, meet Marcus. He's gonna walk us through this beautiful tank. And look, let's be honest, it's probably not in its most heyday because I did miss that opportunity. Um, but that is for good reason why you've got just sort of like a slap together system in the middle of a walkway where it doesn't even fit against that wall. But uh, man, run us through your tank because you've got a basket full of uh, equipment that runs your tank and makes it tick. So let's run through the system. Yeah, so the tank at the moment is in sort of just keep everything alive mode until it's ready to be moved into the new tank once that's ready. But that said, there's still a lot of equipment running on this tank, probably more equipment than most people have. I am a bit of a, a gear junkie. So, I, I mean, starting from the top, I'm running two Kessel A360Xs, both with narrow beam reflectors. And I have this um, precariously balanced reef bright strip, which is actually gonna be running on my new tank. But for the majority of the uh, lifespan of this tank, it's been running the Kessels with T5 uh, hybrid fixtures. So I used to run the DX18. Uh, it wasn't possible to have that mounted temporarily here. So we just had the Kessels. And then when I got the strip in, in preparation for the new tank, uh, I just chucked it up there because why not? Yeah. Well, this tank used to be behind you there against the wall, yeah. which yeah. now houses uh, an incredibly gorgeous, gorgeous cabinet. And uh, you guys literally just slid this across the floor. We did, so Billy from Starfire gave me a hand. He came over with his big barrels and we drained the tank down to about here. Uh, slid the whole thing, or disconnected as much equipment as we could, slid it across the room, and then pumped the water straight back in. Um, the, didn't even skip a beat, nothing really um, was, you know, off put by, you know, 10, 20 minutes is all it took of being out of the water, so that was easy as. What are you doing? Don't destroy the vase. <laughs> yep. Uh, this is Nemo, the cat. <laughs> um, so the, you got the narrow beam reflectors because? Uh, they, I think the, the, the Kessels by themselves have a really wide um, spectrum. Oh, sorry, not spectrum. They have a really wide spread. Yeah. Um, the narrow beam reflector narrows that spread and focuses it. It increases the par over a smaller area. And because my tank's only three foot and I had two of these, um, the, Two, two Kessels with no narrow beam reflectors is, is probably ideal for say a 120 centimeter or a four foot tank to get like perfect part distribution over the whole tank with a low mounting height. Yep. I've got a fairly high mounting height and this tank's a touch deeper than a traditional tank, although I guess that trend is changing because it's similar dimensions to what Waterbox and Kate are putting out these days anyway. Yep. But um, it, it, it gives more kick out of the Kessels at the higher, um, depth so better for SPS SPS, yeah. and it prevents spillage into the room um, and I think it gives better color rendition as well because you just get that extra intensity out of them yep um, I've always liked blasting the tank with light um, and then you know I on top of that I had the T5s as well and right now the reef right strip which I've got unplugged because it's really blue and it plays <laughs> havoc with yeah. the smartphone cameras so if, if we turn that on it would just be blue yeah um, I mean reef rights are the new strip lights that have just entered into the Australian market as well I think they came pretty highly recommended by BRS TV for being the closest LED to the ATI blue plus 
uh, T5 yeah. globe yeah. as any light that they've tested. So it'll be yeah. keen to see you get that onto a tank and actually sort of do some testing to yeah. maybe back that up and hopefully it's not just a sales pitch from BRS. Yeah, no, I'll do, I'm gonna do a full review of it. I'm gonna tear it down because you know these things are obviously pretty easy to pull apart and show you exactly how they work. They're not a complex product, but it's a really well thought out product based off my initial impressions. And yeah, I can't wait to show people you know exactly what it is and, and why it's different to the other LED strips that are already in the Australian market. Awesome. So run us through sort of uh, let's let's start with in tank and what sort of equipment and wave makers you're running in there to begin with. Yep. So on the back wall we have a gyre. This is one of the Glamorca. I don't think Glamorca even exists anymore. But <laughs> it's, it, they're now the Maxpec Jump line. Yep. It's just the older version of that. The cheap gyres, uh, but it gets the job done. It's run ever since day one on the tank and I have it on the back wall. Um, soon after, uh, I think when the tank was maybe six months, I added a, a gyre. This is an XF130, I think. Um, it's the, the older generation, but this is the proper max spec gyre and that one's shooting across the tank. Um, the reason why I don't have them both on the sides is because I find by having one on the back and one on the side, you get a very random flow pattern. In addition, there's the outlet front here from the return pump. So the flow in this tank is a very randomized pattern. Yeah. Uh, and the, the gyres are set to very random programs as well. And yeah. I, I think that's what Coral's like the best. And the flow complements the style of escape you've got as well, because mm. obviously it's got that hollow section in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you don't want just all of it sort of going from side to side, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, I've got enough um, fluffy Coral in this tank to see that there is a fair bit of flow going on, like the hammers are moving, the GSP is moving, the uh, Xenia or whatever that is. And the, yep. Um, Gonoporas and the torches, everything is moving quite a lot. Um, in the new tank, I'm going to have even more flow because SPS really wants it. And uh, yep. I, I do need to get into the SPS because their density is getting so high. Um, so, but I'll be continuing the trend. I'm going to continue running gyres. I do like the, the flow pattern that they produce um, in a big wide sheet. So um, prim primarily that'll be my main source of flow. But with a bigger tank, I can also add spot flow in other areas and we'll just see what, what we end up with there if I need it. But mm, they do, they do yeah. punch out exceptional flow. I think mm. my only drawback with gyres I find or it, it, I think is probably the maintenance. Regime. Yeah, you're right. They, 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 tearing them down and cleaning them is a bit of a chore. There's a lot of surface area. So, you know, a lot of coralline, a lot of algae can grow on them and it does affect their performance massively. Yeah. Um, so when they are covered in algae, you'd be amazed at how little flow they put out. And then when you clean them, uh, all of a sudden your sand will just again. be gone. Because <laughs> like, you know, so, you probably turned it up as it got dirty. So um, yeah, it, they, you do have to keep them clean. I, I think the new models have got some kind of hood or cap on them. And so I, I haven't tested that yet, but I'll, I'll be keen to see if that makes a difference. Because if I can just take that off and clean that and the whole the rest of the gyre stays fine, maybe that'll uh, yeah. alleviate that problem a bit. Well, I think that cap serves two purposes. One, it stops the light from hitting the blades directly, so hopefully it reduces the amount of algae that grows on it. But yeah. it also allows you to mount your gyre a little bit closer to the water surface without sucking down the air, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Which is a pretty limiting factor with the gyre, or any wave maker, to be honest. Yeah, If you get yeah. it too close, it's going to create that vortex of just sucking air down and Noise punching and bubbles and... into the tank. Yeah, actually no one wants that, yeah. Yeah. Well, your tank looks exceptional, man. Like, do you have a, uh, a feeding regime for the coral? Um, I, I used to be much more disciplined around it. Um, before we slid the tank across the room, you know, there was a full routine of um, aminos and coral products. Uh, you know, I've done reviews on everything on the market, so I've used pretty much everything. Um, Powdered-based foods and things like that. And, you know, I, I've always been a... Um, a kitchen sink kind of guy. I, I, I use them all and um, test them all and cover, try to cover my bases by um, using a little bit of everything. Um, yep. And that seemed to work. Um, ever since moving the tank across the room, disrupting the lighting, disrupting my auto water changes, I kind of stunted the growth of a lot of coral, which then in turn reduces the consumption of, yeah. you know, of, of major and trace elements and of course things like aminos and stuff like that. So if I continued feeding as if nothing had changed, my phosphate and nitrate would just skyrocket. Well, you've taken four T5 globes off too, Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the bio load of the tank has is dramatically lower than it was. So right now I'm maybe doing coral foods twice a week um, mixed in with some fish food. Okay. And I'm actually feeding the fish less as well just because the coral is not growing like it was. Yeah. Um, so, 
yeah, you've, or you've, obviously there's a cause and effect to everything, so you've got to keep on top of things like that. Yeah. So do you want to show us uh, sort of the, 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 the guts and soul of uh, yeah, yeah. your tank? So inside here we've got... Um, Is there a light? No more light? Nah, no light at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I've, there was a light in there, but it's not connected at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we've got a skimmer. This is just a NIOS Quantum 120. Um, great little skimmer. Uh, I would probably, this a tank, it, it's probably ideal for say a 60 centimeter or a two foot tank. This is a three foot tank, so it's a little bit undersized. Yep. But uh, you know, it does the job and it's not the workhorse of my filtration. The workhorse of my filtration is this guy here which is the Santa Monica Rain 2 algae scrubber. And uh, as you can see, it's growing algae really well. Um, so this, uh, when it's on, which it runs all night, it will have red light blasting on both sides of this screen and water comes up this pipe and then waterfall style rains down the screen and grows the algae. And then every 10, 12 days or so, I take the screen out, scrape it with a spoon and throw out the algae and you start again and that's my primary nutrient export yep um there is a filter sock in there with a little bit of gfo in it um or you know if i don't need that i'll put some carbon in it or something like that um because there's the two this is the return line here and it splits into two this one's got the filter sock this one is hard plumbed directly into the ato uh, sorry the uh, algae turf scrubber okay uh this chamber here is full of um biomedia um, so I've got uh, mantis bricks in there and this chamber is full of more biomedia the um, These spiral ones. What were they called? I forget the name of them. I did a video on them. Yeah, <laughs> I'll link your video <laughs> Yeah, And the return pump is in there. The return pump is a, uh, a turbine duo um, Which is a little bit wasted on this tank because that's a, a pump with two yeah. Return lines. And I'm just using it. I'm just using one of them. Yep. Uh, on the back here, this big reactor is a Kalkwasser reactor. It puts in about a liter and a half of um, Kalkwasser a day, um, fed from my ATO reservoir. Yep. So that's just most of the evaporation of the tank. And then the rest is just handled by my ATO, which is the smart AWC unit, this unit here. Right now, the auto water change component of it is turned off and it's just doing duty as um, ATO. As ATO. Uh, but obviously it's only turned the, AT, the the auto water change component is only turned off because of the move across the room and the temporary nature of this setup got a Hamali resin reactor here with um, I'm currently running um, Purigen in it uh, in an attempt to reduce the organics and reduce nitrate a little bit not sure how well it works but it does certainly change color okay. <laughs> it goes from um, bright white to brown over the course of two weeks and yep. that's like sort of an indication to replace it but I'm not really noticing a drop in my nitrates so I'm just not sure if I'm not using enough of it or if it's not that effective. Uh, so yeah, is that just in place sure. of carbon essentially? No. To polish the water? Purigen is a, it's an organic resin. Um, it's similar to um, the kind of, well it's, it's meant to reduce nitrates. Okay. Uh, it's, it's meant to, it's like an yeah, it's, it's meant to be a resin that actually attracts nitrate. I'm just not so sure can if it's this, effective can we, enough. Yeah, can that's a that CO2 up? scrubber. So that's the... So it just tumbles inside the reactor there to yeah. very, very slow flow. Yeah. Um, and this here is the uh, CO2 scrubber from Pacific Sun. Yeah, which is just hooked up to the, uh, the skimmer. Yep. And as you can see, it's almost all purple. Only the top of it's white, so I'm almost due to replace that media. Okay. And then I've got this big chamber here for uh, all my trace elements or anything else that I want to dose and as you can see I'm not really using it much right now yeah because um, we're not dosing trace as much as yeah. much at the moment and then what's this unit you got at the top there so it's the core 7 and the KH lab so this is obviously the dosing pump that would be pumping from each of these as well the KH lab is connected to it which does automatic alkalinity testing for me and I have it running every two hours it does an alkalinity test and um, it is actually also connected to my calcium reactor, which is in the next cabinet over, and it controls the calcium reactor effluent flow rate based on whether my alkalinity has risen or fallen. That is hectic. Yeah, so. That is an incredible amount of equipment attached into a sump. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the most I've ever seen, to be honest. So the Core 7 and the KH Lab will be moving to the new tank. Yep. As will probably be the gyres, um, although I do have new, bigger gyres as well. Um, the algae scrubber won't be because I've built my own with Eric from Hamali, so I will still be running an algae scrubber, just not this one. 
Sorry, cat. I'm allergic to you. Please don't jump on me. <laughs> I might die. <laughs> um, the Calcosa reactor will move to the new tank. The CO2 scrubber will move to the new tank. The skimmer won't. The resin reactor probably will. Um, and the biomedia will as well. So I'm, I'm going to insta cycle the new tank with that biomedia. Love it. Um, and just because you're a gear junkie, just that cabinet wasn't enough, right? No. So I've got these extra cabinets here. Um, so this one's got the calcium reactor in it. Um, and you can see the controller on the back wall there. That's connected to the cloud, just like the Core 7. And so that controller, the dosing rate from this calcium reactor is controlled according to the test results of the KH lab every two hours. Yep. Um, that black box in between them is just a, uh, a UPS or a, um, a, an un uninterruptible power supply, basically just a big battery. Yep. Um, and that's just hooked up to my return pump and one of the gyres. Um, in the next cabinet? Uh, this was the chamber for my auto water changes, so right now it's empty. <laughs> yeah. But there was um, a big acrylic reservoir in there, 70 litres, that was holding salt water for auto water changes, but that's not in operation right now, obviously. Um, Crazy. That's mm. an exceptional tank, man. Like, the amount of equipment you've jammed in there and uh, is... is, is oh, right there. There's your RO container, reservoir. Yeah. yeah, just for RO, and I'm manually filling that at the moment, which is a bit of a pain, but uh, yeah, it'll all be automated again when we get it in the, new, yeah. in the new spot. So before we jump over to the new tank, what I'd like to get is some bits of advice of, you know, uh, what you've learned over your reefing career and what advice you would give to a younger Marcus. Yeah. And probably the biggest learning curves you experienced across your tank. Yeah, I guess... The, the, the biggest learning curve for me was understanding the rate at which things like alkalinity and calcium and magnesium can change. So when the tank is doing well, it can all of a sudden be doing really poorly as a result of that success because your consumption can literally double or triple in a very short sp space of time. And if you yeah. don't react to that in any way, you know, an element like like calcium or magnesium or your alkalinity level will hit rock bottom and everything will sulk and be unhappy and you won't know why. Mm -hmm. So getting on top of things like that um, and having an understanding of cause and effect in the tank is really important and it, it just does come with experience, I think. You can, you can learn about it all you want and watch as many YouTube videos as you want, but it, it's, it's very difficult to really see what that means for your tank until um, and, until you've experienced it. And I suppose that's why you've gone down the Core 7 route so you can get your testing automated. Because mm. alternatively, what you would probably be doing for a while until you're in tune with your tank is testing manually daily. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's amplified by the fact that I have so much coral in such a small tank. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably something that I would have done differently from the start is I should have gotten a bigger tank from the start. <laughs> um, because, best, piece of, yeah. best piece of advice, man. Buy yeah. as big as you can go, right? Yeah, a, a larger... Like, the, the more water you have, the slower everything happens. Yeah. Um, so, like, any, any change in an element is slower because yeah. you've just got wa more water volume to buffer it. And, and when you've got this much coral in a small to small tank, things change quickly, yeah. really quickly. And, and that can be rough on some coral. Yeah. Um, so, three bits of advice to a younger Marcus. Get a bigger tank. <laughs> it would have been to start off with a bigger tank yeah um second the second bit of advice would have been um probably do more research on the exact equipment you want to run um buy it once right and buy it once yeah um I, I mean i'm clearly a gear junkie and i've got a lot of really good equipment right now uh, but I didn't get it right the first time. Some stuff I did get right, but I probably lucked into that. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's talk to a lot of people, get a lot of opinions. Don't take anyone, any single opinion as gospel. Um, go to more than one LFS and get multiple opinions before you buy. I know it's an exciting time and you just want to buy the lot and get up and running, but you, you do learn patience in reefing. Uh, yeah, and, um, for sure getting the right equipment for the way you want to reef and understanding what it what certain equipment will give you a benefit of and what maintenance is required of certain equipment and whether that's the choice for you um yeah take your time on that kind of stuff 
And your last bit of advice? Auto water changes. <laughs> Just, yeah. I, I would never ever run a reef tank without auto water changes. Uh, the last three months, this has not had auto water changes and it's killing me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, once you set up auto water changes, Every, it, it solves so many problems before they happen. It gives you time because again, you're buffering those negative things that are happening. And you're you're diluting it out. Right? You're diluting them, and it's just so low effort. You can go away on holidays, and you know that you know there's just that stability that's going to keep happening. Um, yeah. So yeah, set up auto water changes. There's a million videos out there on my channel and Sam Parker's channel and um, other people. And and, and this channel too, by the way. Have, have you done auto water changes, <laughs> No, <David>? I haven't. <laughs> you need to get on it. Yeah, you need to get on auto water changes, man. Like it's... it's I'm it's a no water change man. And so, no water changes, yeah. You know. See, no, that's, no that's water changes is something that I told myself before I had my reef tank. I watched... Yeah. Um, at the time, there were a lot of people experimenting with a no water change approach on YouTube and I was like, oh, I'm totally going to do that. I think the reality of a zero water change system for a brand new reefer, not, impossible. It's, imp no, it's not going to happen. You need to be an experienced reefer. Like once you've yeah. been doing it for you know two years or plus, then you're ready to yeah. take that on because you know what is required. It just takes happen. away that element of playing with fire. Yeah, and and exactly. I'm I'm only now at no water changes mm -hmm. because I'm quite in tune with my tank. So yeah. Yeah. and I've got the confidence and I can pick up on coral with what they're doing and and yeah so you know definitely yeah. water changes if you're if you're new yeah so that's your current tank now let's quickly we're not going to go through in detail because i do want everyone to jump over to your youtube channel to watch your in-depth uh process on everything that you're doing but uh you know give us a rundown of what you are doing here i'll get you to move in frame a little bit there yeah so because that beautiful cabinet it's we, gorgeous. we built this whole cabinet so what started out is just going to be a cabinet to come to here and house the tank and then the hood to house the lighting we extended to include this bench top and bar going across there um, and so it's sort of evolved into a bigger thing it's sort of a semi kitchen living room renovation because we've done stuff in the kitchen as well but um, yeah it's, it's, it's all finished and ready to go except for the fact that there is not a glass box here right now yeah so as your box as, is still coming right? yeah my box is still coming <laughs> so as soon as we get the glass box in um, I can then move the sump into the cabinet and we can plumb it and fill it with water and away we go because all the equipment is here gorgeous sump by the way yeah Eric really outdid himself so yeah, Eric from Mali sure. yeah. built that sump um, like he built your amazing sump as well and yeah, yeah the, the, I'm really excited to to, to see it in action. Yep. Um, so dimensions of the new tank? So it's about uh, 180 centimeters um, left to right. Yep. It is 560 front to back and top to bottom it's going to be 710. Oh ish. damn. So quite a deep Yeah that's tank. deep. Yep. Um, your box is deep that's well, crazy obviously um, that's you, you can subtract a bit from that because you know you, you, glass, be base glass, and, glass yep. thickness and yep. bracing and um, yeah where the water level ends up being but yeah it will be a deeper tank um, you show us a cool trick with your cabinet yeah so we had to automate what these doors these so people I've, I've got my Lambo doors going yeah. on um, so the the lights will all be mounted in here. This is going to be storage for reef junk, which my wife is very happy about because currently the reef junk is everywhere. You know, to be honest though, we all know that the reef junk's still going to be all over the house. Shh. You know, I built an entire room in the, on the, you know, telling her that I'm going to be uh, putting all my stuff away, but that is definitely not the case. So, yeah. but that is a gorgeous cabinet, man. I love, I love the finish on the hood. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And you've taken this to the next level by literally making this a piece of furniture in your house by building the bench, building the cabinet, so it all looks like one and everything literally just looks like it's a part of your house, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I've moved the coffee machine to, to this corner and I'll have some bar stools here so that you make your coffee, sit on the bar stool and you're looking at the tank. Happy days, man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to get all this up and running and uh, all the equipment in and move all the coral across. That'll be a big day. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thanks for showing us around, man. No so guys, I hope you enjoyed that walk around Marcus's tank. Be sure to head over to his YouTube channel and check out all of his amazing content that goes into depth. And I mean in depth 
with all of the products that he uses and how he runs his tank. And we are excited and really, I personally am, really pumped to see this tank come to life whenever your box decides to come, mate. <laughs> I'm told next week. Next week. <laughs> you know, you hear that a lot with Billy. So Billy, <laughs> you better get onto it, buddy. But uh, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions about how Marcus runs his tank and his upcoming build. And he will be sure to jump in there and answer any questions for you. And yep. be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, to help the channel grow. And my friends, until next time, peace. peace.